screens we're going to kind of be in and out of the room getting this table ready for some uh, stand-up dry sifting and uh, yeah we'll be back go to the corner okay. going down gently so we don't shake right until the glass gets in that's right and we're going to replace the glass after right perfect yeah beautiful hey what we lose we lose I just said it's face up, it doesn't matter, it's where all the hash is. Okay. Yeah, so just listen because I can't hold this oh, up okay. any longer, okay. so you just have to execute what I'm okay. begging you. Now that's no, I want you to put it up face up. Yes, the oh. face up, that way is face up. Okay, but all the hash is on your side. No, it's not. You're oh, wrong. right, because the bun was underneath You're wrong. Okay. Just thank you for not, like, sometimes so, you don't have to understand, yes. you just have I'll to, because this is real heavy for me. Yes. I'm having a hard time holding it, in fact. Okay, we're good. We're good. Oh, there we go. What do you think there is? Like five, six, seven pounds of weed on there? Jesus. No. I don't think there's a pound. Two. 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 Do you think well, so? this. Some pounds? That looks like at least two. Think of half pound rice. Still, that's a lot of weed. Should we take these over? Uh, no, leave them there for a second. We don't need the prayer anymore. I'm going to figure this out. This is my 200. No, this is my 300. So this is a screen that we'll put aside. Okay. I can make room on. Have. Oh, in here? No, that's not a good spot. I'm thinking maybe. More burden. Possibly right here. Okay, move the glass over there, yeah. yeah. I can move these guys a little bit. Yeah. This is perfect. We'll put this guy. This is a 50 micron screen. Nothing falls through it? Exactly. Okay. It's very tight. Okay. So that'll be safe there. You want to put these blocks underneath this one? I think it'd be a good idea, yeah. This one can fall easier? So yeah, if you lift this screen up a, up a bit, you'll see that that the majority of that resin, this resin right here, yeah. is right there. Okay. Oh yeah, nice. Yeah. I had already felt with my fingers on the other side, the yeah. side that had the herb. Yeah, that's that's no not where movement. the resin was. Really, that's just no movement. I haven't done all the way with wet. I moved it, but otherwise I haven't touched it. Absolutely great. So hopefully, hopefully it works good. Now, here. what else could we use? We could use. I'll put this in. Oh, look at that right there. I'll wait for that for. Well, this is just something that we can put the buds in. Okay. So After the finish. What is that in there right now? It's, it's just a little leftover residue from... Uh, I'm going to rinse it out real quick. Yeah, the eyeball. Here, I'll do it first. Keep on looking at that. Okay, I'm going to take this off because then I'm getting one off. All right, so we've got a couple of pounds of herb on our 200 lines per inch screen. This is 140 micron. 140 micron this screen. It's all buds, popcorn buds. This is definitely like people would buy this. This is 100% like sellable herb. But uh, we're not going to be doing that with it. We're going to be extracting the resin off of it. We've also got some of this stuff, which is 
herb that was run through the Spin Pro. The, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with the little Spin Pro, one of the trimming machines. But that is what that was run through with. These are just little popcorn buds, bottoms of the plants that never really, you know, there's still some substantial nugs and they are perfectly dried. So, should be good. So I've got a piece of glass here that I'm using as the base. I usually go right onto a 70 micron, but I've got the glass here. It should make for nice photographic and video. There's already a tiny bit of dry sip on this just from, oh this looks like it's been really dried properly Ron. Huh? It looks like it's been well dried. It's the resin is very um, just out of the room. No orange. Heat. No heat. You know? No, no, just bad going on in it. Excellent. Well, let's no heat at all. Let's set up our screen. Mm -hmm. uh, Do I get in the way of the camera if I go over there? If you stand right in front of it, you'll be in the way. Okay. Don't do that. Yeah. Otherwise, you can go stand over there. You lost in a second. Yeah. All right. So. Almost, did you bring that bin in? Right there. All right, so. Like one. I think what a good idea will be is to, for us, to put some of this herb in this bin. Okay. And make, make some room off of our table. The flaw. Yeah. It's not like you can't dry sift with this much material on a screen. But I find it's nice to just make a little bit of room this is a lot of material. I know you, did, you don't think so, but please. This is a couple of pounds. Okay, there. That's good. So we'll put this right here. Right next to your element there, or your little thermometer. Try to keep clean. I try to keep a nice clean. We don't want... Well, yeah, right? And if you end it up on right here, it's going to end up going... How was this supposed to cut the glass? I mean, I have to cut the glass for pretty good. It's great. It's great. I love it. You cut the glass too? Yeah. Very nice. Cool. I had to dive and double the edges. I, I mean, it's, not, it's nice to have, you know? It'll be nice to see, I took see the to, resin. I took the him and showed him it. At the glass, but I just got speedy glass. I said, this is like a quick hash. I want it to be perfect size, so a little bigger, so it's... <laughs> That's awesome. It, I, oh, what, did they, what were they I like? It I said, it's it's good. Good. Nothing can get that through that screen. I said, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. No, no, that's how it works. So I'm just gently, sort of gently removing the buds. Can you check the back of the camera screen and see if my head's cut off at all, Ron? It's right in there, bud. But is my head out of the camera shot? Perfect. Cool. I always like to know. I hate to do videos for you guys and then have it be like halfway out of the camera or something. So. Yeah, so. Yeah, this is nice. If you look under here, Ron, while I'm moving this around, you can see the resin falling. Yeah. You see it? Yeah. Isn't that nice? Now the more the more aggressive I am, the more contaminant will go through. Now of course it's always easy making hash with half a pound of bone dry bud that's covered in resin. This isn't a real difficult thing. We're gonna get a good amount just because we're using a good amount. So I'll gently move these buds around and then what I'll do is we'll lift the screen up and we'll check the resin, we'll pile it all up with the card into my first pile, and from there, I'll dry sift probably more with this particular ma uh, material, and I'll put the second wash of this material over here, not that it's a wash, but the second sift. And I sort of do that with each material. When I'm done this, I'll put it in another bucket, and we'll take the fresh out of here, and we'll sift that, and that first sift will go into the pile, next to the pile of this first sift. Once I get those piles, then I'm going to clean each one individually through the tighter screen, which is sitting over here. I'll, doing some, I'll be doing carding techniques. And, uh, you know, it's funny right now we're in a room. It's not super warm in here, but I can easily be outside doing this right now. I think when we do the cleaning on the second screen, we'll go outside and do that part. We got the cold, why not? We'll probably show you that, guys that tomorrow, uh, tomorrow morning. So... Alright, so, 
What was, was that, that a couple? That Three wasn't, minutes? That wasn't much rubbing at all, eh? Four minutes? Okay, so, put a little bit of pow pow there. I'm going to be gentle though, you see how stuff somehow managed to get through. It was probably there before I thought I had cleaned the glass super good, but it's very easy for little pieces. It's also why I cleaned um, underneath the glass, because sometimes if a leaf is under the glass and you think, you know, you think it's over the glass, you kind of try to clean it a little harder than... Really loving the color on. Nice. Yeah, it's a really, you know, when you're making dry sift, I know people think it's great to see this golden or this white, almost clear hash. You know, those are immature heads that have not been cured. This is hash that, fresh frozen basically, right? You take the fresh frozen up and bud, when you run it, it makes beautiful bubble, but it, it doesn't have that same, like, dry cured look that you get from, from the dry sift. What do you think of that little pile, Ron? Not bad, eh? Not too bad, you know? It was very gentle. The quality looks like it's there. And of course I'll need to clean it. Dry sift. Yeah, we're dry sifting here, Darren. We're just doing our dry sift. We got it going on. We're making a little video for YouTube. So we've done our first screening. We'll probably go back to doing much more of the same thing. And once I've got a bunch more piles of this, we're gonna come back and we're gonna do our secondary screen, so we'll see you in just a bit. Okay, I have since doubled my producing abilities. I've got my second set of screens here. On this one I have um, my 110, this is the 140 microns, and then underneath that I've got a 70 micron and I've got cardboard under that. We're not going to be carding anything right here, but I thought at least it would be a good idea to get this material, some of it, out on the screen. I'm thinking if I can get most of it on there, I'll be able to use this container to pick up some of this material we've already run. So, easy enough. Scoop it right into the bucket. Doesn't matter if I get all 100% of it. Basically, I just this is material I've run once, and so I'll be putting it over to the side for now. Right here, actually. And I'll get some of this guy over. Clean the screen a little bit. You always want to make sure you're over glass. If you don't have your cardboard, that's the nice thing about having the cardboard piece taped under the other screen. Now, keep in mind I have two screens and the resin is only going to fall onto the second screen. That second screen is not going to be releasing anything readily uh, through it. That's really where you have to do the carding work. And that doesn't happen just easily, so we're okay. Very tough work. I, I would like to not have the space that I have between these two screens right now. I'm getting a lot of uh, contaminant. So what I think I'm going to do is lift this up and push it right to the end. I don't want that contaminant falling through. It's Cleanliness is godliness in this. You really want to keep a nice clean area. You don't want to be too violent. Of course this work can be done with a tumbler. You don't need to do this the way I'm doing it. I like the hands-on feeling. I like the hands-on approach. It lets me know the resin that I'm working with, how sticky it is, how much is present, just from doing a quick little bounce like this. And of course, we'll probably bubble all of this material when we're done. So I'm going to be doing this for a short bit longer, and we'll show you what we got. All right, so we've gently, gently rubbed the buds over the top of the screen. We're going to sort of lift it up real gently here and see what we've what we've acquired. A 
really nice color. Right texture. It's very grainy. And say we uh, we got a real nice material out of this. Alright, time to make some dry sift. Whew. It's a cold night out there, boy. Ugh. Ooh, that's nice and cold. Nice and cold. Feel the cold in this bud. Nice material to be dry sifting. And I'm putting quite a bit of material on there, but why not? We can. I'll we'll just do some nice gentle. I've, uh, yeah, I'm going to be carding this material. That's how I'm going to go about cleaning it. Um, I do have a variety of ways I can go about cleaning it. The way I'm going to go about cleaning it is a carding technique. And it's easier if I'm gentle with the resin rather than extreme. So you don't want to really like be super violent with it. You can if you want, but you're going to be spending more time cleaning that resin. It's not really worth the feeling of like, oh yeah, I got so much. It's like, yeah, you got so much contaminant. I just really want the headies. So. I will start grinding down some of the popcorn nugs to access those. This is extremely dry material, which is great for dry sifting. People ask me all the time, hey, does it need to be dry? Pretty much, it's right in the name. First word, dry, dry sifting, dry material. It's a good idea to make it dry. It's not a misnomer. It's real, it's, it's dry. We want it dry. And uh, really, some of the most successful stuff is um, actually going to remove this. Doesn't need to sit there in the light like that. All right. Okay, so I like to keep a nice clean zone when I'm dry sifting. I don't mind if the leaf goes on the ground, but I really hate it being on my underlining glass. I hate it being on the glass anywhere, actually. I would normally, if you are going to cut glass for the bottom of your screen, I would cut it the same size as the frame of your screen, not bigger. That way when leaves go over the, the frame that you won't be in a situation where uh, it's it ends up falling on the glass and then I walk by and I blow it under and then when I lift up the screen and look, you know, you end up finding buds like that. So, let's check and see what we've got. Get this gently put here. Nice and gentle. And we'll see what we've got. Great color on this resin. Not sure how well all of you can see, but it is really nice color resin.
so not a ginormous amount by anyone's standards, but you know, another nice secondary pile of Sometimes I'll just I guess we can pull out the actual metal card that I have for the glass. It'll probably work pretty good. Yeah, it does. Look at that. Oops. Using a V Syndicate, nice little glass bubble man card. Got a couple of tiles there. Alright, so there's our material. Got a little hair in there and some other things. It's by no means pure heads. I would say that it's um, probably a good 70% contaminant. But that's not to be really, a, that's not a huge surprise. I was uh, making it quite roughly. Alright, and there's our other little pile. Doing great. Alright, so we've done a bunch of dry sifting. Not a bunch, but a little bit. And we're going to take this screen and just place it gently over here. Um, never a bad idea to have these little guys helping you out as well. I don't actually have them over here, but it's a good idea if you do have them. How's it going, Ron? Good, great. Excellent. Just got out of the garden, did you? Yeah, done. All right, so check it out. That's a good pile, eh? But that's got to be still clean, eh? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to clean it. Yeah, pretty nice. Well, that's what I'm saying. All I know is I want to. I want nice us color. to have. It's a great color. color. Nice color. We should have. Um, this is properly cured resin, and I was trying to explain to the people out there that you know nowadays it's a young group of people making this, uh, making water hash, and they're all really stoked on fresh frozen. So the resin glands never really have any time to to dry properly, to to cure properly. And when I mean cure, I mean the difference between the resin, the wax membrane drying and shriveling up. You can really see it in macro photography. I can show you the pictures and um, the difference between a, a swollen full head that's got moisture in it clearly still and one that doesn't. So we've got a couple of nice piles there. How much fluffy more than sticky though? Eh? Well, because it's still going to be contaminated by, uh, you know, I'd say at least 70%, yeah, yeah. maybe 60 Yeah. But that doesn't mean I won't get, like, out of these two piles, out of this pile here, I make it a pile like that of pure heads. Like it's worth pure heads. It's worth your time. That's oh, what it's listen, worth the time. it's going to be great. <laughs> it's always worth the time. So. Because it's always, and that's nice. It's, it's nice if you can, if you can use uh, material you don't really want to put in, in uh you know, for any other use, it's exactly. nice, nice to have a use for. Alright, so we've gotten to the next step here. We had the 110 line per inch screens, which are 140 micron. Those 140 micron screens that I was bouncing the three to four pounds over, um, I was bouncing gently at first, got a little more rough uh, later on. I'm not trying to get a ton, I'm trying to get quality. Uh, I managed to get these two piles here. This pile actually looks quite decent, even as you see as I broke it, you can see the whole thing moved as a pile. That's a good sign. Um, still probably 60% contaminant. And then over here, uh, on my screen, on my 70 micron screen, this is a 200 lines per inch. And the 200 lines per inch screen, 70 microns, 
is the screen that we'll work with to do our carding. So I have a piece of cardboard like this taped to the bottom of this screen. It's not really going to put a lot of material through, but um, I'll actually uh, end up working on this screen the other way. I'm going to get all this resin off, put it on the glass, and then I'm going to flip this screen over and I'll actually work on the glass with the cardboard off. I like to work on the top of the screen when I'm doing this part. I don't like to be in the screen. You know, the, it, like the way it works out with the herb, that's great, but this way's a little bit different. All right, so, real quick. Clean off the resin off of that screen, and then we will take the tape off the sides. All right, that one. I just came over today on the plane. That's why I originally taped these up. I'm always nervous with my screens Oops. that they're going to be punctured. I don't really want them to be punctured. So when you travel with them, it's a good idea to have them uh, protected like this. And this is just a nice thick corrugated plywood. Um, it'll protect your screens. And I'm sure that some ice wax guy out there is going to say, Hey, you can just use parchment paper. Trust me, parchment paper is not thick enough to protect your screen. You're going to want a nice thick cardboard, for sure. All right, so we got this guy. I'll kind of get this so ready. Got a little bit of resin on this screen, so we might as well save it. All headies. We'll make a nice picture. Probably do it tomorrow. But yeah, getting a picture of just the heads on the glass would be nice, I'm certain. Alright, so let's see. I'll bring these guys all the way over here. working space for our screen. Because we've got a great size screen, you can understand that you don't need to have um, uh, a pound of resin to work with to warrant this size screen. It's doable. With a smaller amount, you can keep your separate grades here at the bottom and then slowly work your carded resin in the middle. Now, some of you might not understand what I mean by carded. I'm going to show some photos in this tutorial of trichomes. And right now I'm going to be showing one. So when you look at this trichome, you'll see that it has a long capitate stalk. That's its body. It grows out of a leaf, the cannabis plant. And then on top, there's a nice bulbous head. And inside that head, are all the wonderful medicinal benefits that we get from cannabis, uh, as well as the terpenes and the terpenoids, the flavors and the tastes. They're all in this glandular trichome head. And so when we make a dry sift single screen extraction, what we get are trichomes. We get the glandular head, we get the capitate stalk, we get the systole of hair, which is a non-glandular material that looks like a capitate stalk but it has, no, it has no head and it kind of points out at the end. I'll show one of those as well. 
And what these things are is they're gold to look at to the naked eye. When they're mixed with heads, they look gold. You think you might have gold. I can guarantee you this is massively contaminated because we've only run it through the one screen and we weren't uber, uber gentle. Um, what I want to do now is I'm going to take this... Um, actually, I think we should do this outside. So I'll set this up outside and we'll be right back. Hey, how's it going everybody? Bubble Man here. I'm out in the Kootenays in some beautiful minus 10 or so weather. A little bit of a chilly night. There's a lot of snow all around me. Um, Ron's been so gracious as to light me up with the T5, so we've got some good light. I figured it was a good idea to come out here to do the final part of the process. And what that is, we've already single screen sifted our, our dry sift. Uh, we've got three decent piles right here. I've got a couple of different cards I'm going to be playing around with, different thicknesses of plastic. Um, my buddy Darren talks about having some good luck with the iTunes plastic card. It says he's collecting a lot of uh, contaminant on one side and heads on the other, so that's great. Um, we can experiment with a little bit of that, but mostly what I want to do today is show you um, the simple process of carding the material. I can already feel the resin's cold, and I love that. I love that it's cold. This is a great environment for dry sifting. So, um, we're going to spread our, our resin across the screen, nice and gently, get it nicely spread. You know, much the way I tell people when they're drying bubble, the thinner spread you can get it, the better. A few little pieces of contaminant there. And just gently it over. Now this screen is quite light, or this card I should say. We've got a thicker card here. I'm used to a card more along this lines. I can really press it through. I don't want to be too hard when I'm pressing, but definitely want to do some of that pressing. Keep in mind this dry sift is probably 70% contaminant. Great to be dry sifting in the winter. It's great to be surrounded by snow. I hope tomorrow to make some bubble hash using snow uh, to cool our water. Now we'll still use some ice to um, actually break the heads off of their bodies, but we're going to use snow uh, to cool the water. And yes, when we cool the water with the snow, we will filter that water through a 25 micron bag and remove any dust, debris rocks, any dirt that would be in the snow. We're using pretty uh, clean snow that we find just up the mountain behind my buddy's place here, but it still can have some dirt in it, so it's good to clean out. So this process is a very slow process. It's not one that you're going to um, do quickly. Um, it's counterintuitive. The faster you try, the slower your work will become. Uh, I can't say enough about the cold. It's really making the resin feel great. And so just gently, I've also should mention I have a piece of cardboard that I've placed underneath this screen. So it's the same size as the um, screen frame. And so not that it's going to capture a lot of valuable things, but any heads that are smaller than 70 micron and a lot of capitate stalks and systolith hairs will eventually be pushed through this screen. And so, of course, it's a good idea to have something to capture that. And so that's what we have. We have, uh, you know, you can use glass, you can use plexiglass, you can, you can use whatever you want. I used cardboard in this instance because it was easy to bring it outside. Glass is a little bit more dangerous to, to move and it makes things heavier. This table is a little bit uh, uh, shaky as well, so I didn't want heavy glass on it. So the cardboard works great for that. It's just collecting resin that I'm mostly using in metables. So. Um, for a small pile of dry sift like this, you can easily work it for 20, 30, even 40 minutes. And in that time, you would clean this pile down to, you know, anywhere from down to 20% of what's here to even down as far as 5 to 10%. So it's pretty incredible how much you can lose. I'm noticing uh, in the cold here that the resin's not sticking to my card. That's really nice. Um, I'm really quite happy with that. So I won't be 
filming the whole time I card all these resins out, but I'll end up showing you some photos of the before, uh, the sum during, and the eventual after of the product that I make. And uh, yeah, just thought I'd show you a cool, simple way to do some dry sifting. You've got your first screen. If you're buying a mesh screen, please understand that it's, uh, it's marked lines per inch. Uh, that's silk. If you buy silk screen, it's always going to be in lines per inch. Don't go asking for micron sizes, okay? I'm going to give you a quick explanation right now. The two screens that I promote for my dry sifting are a 110 line per inch, okay? A 110 is actually a 140 micron, okay? The secondary screen that I'm using is a 200 lines per inch screen. This screen is actually 70 microns. You see with lines per inch as the number gets higher, the hole actually gets smaller. This is very confusing to a lot of people. They don't understand the differences between the lines per inch and the micron. There are simple conversion charts that you can Google and find online. You can also buy the book Hashish by Robert Connell Clark. He has a wonderful uh, conversion chart in there as well as um, incredible information both historically and um, the technical aspects of making hash and even the science behind the trichome. So I urge you to pick that book up. Of course, Amazon and all these places have it, and uh, we sell it as well at freshheadies.com. So, yeah, I'm going to keep on doing a little bit of dry sifting out here. It's 2 o'clock in the morning. I'm in the Kootenays. I'm having a great time. We'll talk to you guys soon in Bubble Man's world. Peace.